Hey, what's up everybody? I'm Andrew with Field Treasure Design. So behind me, my daughters are playing with the new doll bunk bed that I built them thanks to my friend Rogue Engineer Jameson's plans. And this thing is so cool! Daddy, they're oh. sleeping! I'm sorry, so I'd love to show you how I built it. So check this out. First, I went straight to ripping down my boards and then cutting them to size. But then all of a sudden I realized, oh, I didn't have my dust collection on, so that's gonna help a little bit. After I cut everything to size, here are the pieces that I was working with. I used half inch plywood and one by one inch square dowels. Thanks to Rogue Engineer's plans, I was able to print out the headboard and footboard patterns as well as the side rails so I can make a nice decorative cut a little bit easier. Then it was just a matter of tracing the lines. Now, unfortunately, I had sold my bandsaw and all I have is my jigsaw, but that's gonna work. And here's how I did it. Just clamped it to my work surface and follow the line. It's obviously a little unruly at times and made me wish I had my bandsaw, but the good news is, is this is exactly what you can do if all you have is a jigsaw. And as you can see, it works. I got the first side rail cut and used it as a template to trace for the next one. And back to the jigsaw. Done. Next was to move on to cut the headboards and footboards. I used the exact same approach. This one I tried to double up and it went okay, but it wasn't the best. For the next few, I decided to cut them one at a time. Here's a better angle to show you how I was doing it. Then I jumped back on my miter saw to cut the corners or the 45 degrees off of the bed supports. And of course now it's time to sand and sand and sand. Every single side, radius, corner. It took a little while, but it's always worth it. For my stain color, I chose Rust-Oleum's Weathered Gray. I usually like to use this, especially if I plan to sand later. It just gives it a cool, distressed look. My angle's not really great here, sorry about that, but at least you can see some of my kids' drawings on the board. <laughs> I let the stain dry overnight in the house since it was so cold outside. When everything was ready, I unpacked it and got ready to sand all the pieces. In case you're wondering, I only stained the one bed support because I used that just as a test to make sure that the color was gonna look good. And then when I went to do the other one, I thought, eh, I don't really need to since the mattress is gonna cover it for the whole time. Here I'm using 220 grit sandpaper. Nothing too crazy, just enough to smooth out the pieces and give it a little distressed look. And here's the results of that sanding. Just a little bit distressed with being smooth. Time to bust out nails for the nail gun and fill up my glue bot. I'll be using my mag shims from FastCap to help me lay everything out. Lock and load. And here we go, time to start laying everything out and assembling the bed. I'm using one and a half inch 18 gauge nails. Those spacers really come in handy because they keep the board up enough to be able to mount them to the middle of the posts. They also help with spacing so you don't have to keep measuring and measuring. It's pretty self-explanatory here, but I wanted to show you each part just so you could get an idea of the assembly. My combo square really came in handy for the measurements that needed to stay consistent on different parts. That way I didn't have to keep re-measuring. Sweet, all done. Time for the next one. We'll go a little quicker this time. I'll speed it up. Boom, done. <laughs> now for the bed supports and side rails. I used the same method as last time when I fastened the side rails, but the good news is I didn't need the spacers because the bottom could be flush to the side rails. Just repeat the process, use the same nails, and good to go. Then just repeated everything for the second one. I like to use a paper towel just to clean up the extra glue before it dries. 
Then came the fun part, the full assembly. I didn't really know how to get it assembled, so I turned it on its back, and this method worked really well. I could balance it, I could adjust it, and I could pop the nails in and get it secure, and then I could flip it back over and do the other side. And there are those spacers again, helping me make those nice measurements without having to get a ruler or a measuring stick out. Man, they're so handy. Just a few more nails and we're good to go. Fully assembled. Now this bed needs mattresses. I picked up some foam at the craft section in Walmart. It was absolutely perfect for this. Used my Sharpie to make the measurement and then I didn't really know how to cut it and so I started with a utility knife. It worked pretty well, but I had to make quite a few passes. And as you can see, it ended up getting a little bit messy. So I grabbed some scissors and cleaned up the edges. And then I thought, oh, sweet. I can use the scissors to cut out all of these. So after I cleaned up the edges, I went ahead and made a test fit. After I was confirmed that it was the right size, I just used that one to measure for the next one. And this time I used scissors from the get-go, made it a lot cleaner as you can see. Now we're looking like a bunk bed. This is sweet. Of course I had to pause and put the Field Treasure Designs brand on there. I mean, how cool is that? Popped open my clear coat. I like to use Minwax oil modified water-based polyurethane. It's a clear satin and it is awesome. It's usually used for flooring, but I love it for all kinds of products like this. After I let it dry for a couple hours, I come back and sand it with 600 grit sandpaper by hand. I repeat the process a couple of times until I'm ready. Oh, and as you can see, I wrote my daughter's note on the bottom of the bed. That'll be a special thing. We'll see how long they keep it. Some more sanding and we are almost done. 